Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Willinga Park TV daily wrap for two, day two of the Jumping Grand Final. I certainly feel a little out of my depth with the level of uh, expertise I have in the sport of show jumping here. Welcome to Mr. Scott Keach. Welcome, Scotty. Great to have you here. Thank you, Tim. Great to be here. Thank you. Kermo, Jamie Kermon, great to have you here. Thanks, Tim. Good to be here. Rowan Willis. Yep, cheers, Tim. And Billy Raymond. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. Boys, uh, for the first time on Australian soil, we bring the Australian WEG team for 2018 from Tryon, finishing in sixth place together. Boys, is it good to be back? Have the have the Wolf Pack back together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good to be back. And um, yeah, we had a great week over there, so I'm sure we can you know, maybe continue it on and celebrate a bit more here. Scotty, mate, you've literally just dropped off a plane this morning. You've come back from Florida where you're based. When was the last time you were here in Australia? Last Christmas, last year. And, uh, mate, good to be back on Australian turf and not have that funny accent around you all the time? <laughs> yeah, well, I sort of, I guess I'm used to it now over there, but the good thing is that apparently I haven't picked one up myself, so that's uh, always a bit of a relief when someone says I haven't done that. Mate, how many years have you been away from home now? Ten. And uh, do you miss it here in Australia? Oh, for sure. Uh, there are pros and cons with what I'm doing. And there are certain aspects of Australia that are irreplaceable that you, you, you can't sort of, you can't copy over there. So definitely there are aspects of it here that I miss a lot. Kermo, mate, uh, great to have you here, yourself and Jim, off to a wedding of all things tomorrow. So not riding, but uh, nice to be at a show and not have to be worrying about the, the competition. Yeah, it's great to be here and just in, enjoying the property, the facilities and the jumping. Unfortunately, it's been a little bit rainy as the last event was last year, was it? Um, but yeah, it's great to be here and like, I love being back in Australia. The thing I miss about when I'm over in Europe or whatever is the quality of shows over there. But with the show uh, yourself and Terry put it on here and hopefully it just keeps growing, it'll be great if we can get the, get the level up here. And like Tommy Dermott's jumping for 75 grand tomorrow. So just to have that in our own backyard is fantastic. Rowan, it's been 10 years since you rode a horse here and probably about 17 or 18 years since you were based here. Uh, last time you rode, it was a young horse at uh, Sayak that your mum and dad bred to see whether it was good enough. Back here and you get to sit on a horse like uh, PWS Shared Tilly. Firstly, great to have you home. Nice to be riding such a nice horse. Yeah, I'm pretty lucky for uh, Chris and Gabby to be letting me ride their fantastic mare uh, this weekend. And yeah, it's nice to be, nice to be jumping on home soil and Certainly miss, certainly miss Australia. So, yeah, let's let's see what we can do tomorrow, and yeah, try and get a few Aussie dollars. Hey, uh, Billy, uh, not the day today. Anton, though, looking better and better each day. Of course, he's your number two horse in a sense. The number one horse sold in Oaks Redwood. That was always the plan, and we'll talk about the other boys' horses in a minute. But uh, you're now on the hunt for another Grand Prix horse. Uh, yeah, for sure. I'm really lucky to come back and, and have Anton after selling my horse that I took to Wegg. Um, so, so it's fantastic to still have him and he's been jumping quite well actually. He, he jumped well at sale a couple of weeks ago and won the World Cup. But uh, yeah, a little, a little slow start yesterday. I think a little bit better today. So hopefully tomorrow is back to normal. But, You'll um, have right. Yeah, <laughs> we'll keep trying anyway. But um, you know, as the guys said, it's fantastic to be here. As you heard uh, with Scott and Rowan, you know, they've sacrificed a large part of their life to do the campaign that they've done. And, and I'm really lucky to, to have, you know, competed at a WEG and done it mostly from here. And I think, you know, in the last few years, it's, it's probably credited to shows like this. The quality of shows that we're getting here now are, are helping us to be able to do that. So, uh, you know, that's really nice for some of us. Hey Rowan, uh, we're talking about horses. Blue movie, your horse, placed on the first day at WEG. Where's that horse now and what's the plan with that one? Yeah, she was great at WEG. Um, she's just, she did a couple of shows afterwards and now she's back in Florida uh, having a bit of a break and just um, her usual kind of hacking out with my um, groom there, Robert. So um, she you rest until the middle of January and then do a couple of small shows and hopefully be ready for, for February. Interesting horse. She's quite a uh, fiery uh, redhead, you'd say. Probably a polite <laughs> way to say it. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's been hard work for, for many years. Um, but just been lucky enough the last two years to, to finally get the measure of her and, and she's certainly repaying me now. Do you reckon she'll still be knocking on the door for Tokyo 2020? Yeah, I think um, hopefully... She actually she improved a lot this year, and she did very um, very little mileage, kind of the young horse up until nine. So 
I think she's got plenty left in her and, and hopefully she'll, she'll keep improving for the next few years. Kermo, we'll uh, turn the attention to you now. Of course, Yandu Oaks Constellation, he's back in Australia. You've, you've made the decision not to sell and with the owners, John and Kerry, winning, bring him home. Is that the, the long-term goal or I suppose the 18, 20-month goal for, for Tokyo? Is that the, where the picture? Yeah, it sure is. Like the whole, he's 11 years now, so he'll be 13 by the Olympics, which is going to be starting to get towards the, like the, the back end of when they're sort of at their peak, I think. But we've also looked after him. He feels in great shape. This was probably his best season he's had. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty confident. But, yeah, it's just going to be a, a sort of a waiting process and keep him fit and healthy. I want to try and get him, like, I, I know I can't get him too much, but I want to try and get him 10% better on the flat and just work on a few little things. And next year, just really pick out my shows. But hopefully I'll plan to bring him here at the end of the year, Aquas early in the year, and just a few others. But no, he won't go to a show every weekend. I'll, we'll try and really look after him next year. Horses at this level, I mean, Scott, your horse too, Theodore, has been jumping at this level. They don't need to be starting every day of the week, do they? No, no. Certainly once they get to the 11 years, especially 12 years plus, then it's about picking the right starts and conserving them. And uh, your horse, what's the plan? Where's, where's it now? Uh, he's just had five weeks off and he's just coming back in. And I've got probably three five stars during the winter that I'll aim for with him and, um, and then just pick out a few sort of good classes throughout the year and try and just pick the good ones, yeah. Tell us on your string of horses, have you got a few more knocking at the door to uh, keep him honest as your number one horse? Uh, at the moment, theoretically, yes. Um, I can tell you by the middle of next year, but I, I, I think I have two that are that are, uh, prob should be legitimate five-star horses by next summer. One for me. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say, Bill? <laughs> yeah, one Billy. Yeah. Yeah. Billy can ride one, no problem with that. Scotty and Rowan, you guys both spend a bit of time in America, that Florida Wellington series where you go and base yourselves for a, no a period of time at the one venue. That must just make life so much easier from a logistics point of view. You want to go first, Rowan, or...? Yeah, well, um, yeah, it certainly does, but I like to like to move around. Like, we're based in Akala. Actually, I'm just kind of a mile down the road from Scott, so it's very handy. He's helped me out there when I first moved and showed me the ropes and uh, lent me his truck and trailer to get around. <laughs> and, yeah, but I've, uh, we go down to Wellington a couple of times and, and I got across to California there um, just to keep the horses a bit fresh and, you know, different arenas. Um, I try not to stay in the same place too long. Well, they normally don't let me, but... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but now you've said it. Yeah. Scotty, your thoughts on that? It's definitely convenient in the winter there with the show going on, but it's, it, it, it's a little bit too that you want a bit of variety for the horses, a bit like what Rowan was saying. So, uh, you know, jumping in the same ring after a while gets a bit monotonous. So but we've got Wellington, so we're trying to mix it up a little bit, but it is convenient for sure. Interesting for us boys, be careful what we wish for, I suppose, here in Australia, uh, Kerm and Billy. No, no, I think we should definitely come here for four weeks next year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> four, eight. Yeah, Just as yeah. long as we get it put in a golf course down. I know you said that's on the cards. So. <laughs> Mate, uh, you <laughs> need to talk to Terry Snow, not I. There's a great spot for a golf course down there, isn't, yeah, it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You can try and change our breeding paddocks into golf course, Kerm. I wish you the best of luck with that. <laughs> hey, boys, one thing I've noticed, we've come back together. I know you, you guys don't always hang out, but from here in Australia, the, the team morale from you guys, day one came out. It just, you could feel the, the team Aussie passion that you guys had at WEG and, and I think it was probably our real strong term this year and really made the world stand up and uh, to sort of notice. Where, where'd that come from? How's it all come about? Who's, who's the uh, team leader in this group? Oh, I think it was Todd. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was uh, just one of those things that happened. You get, there was a feeling around the place that everybody wanted it so much and then in the end we all started fighting for each other, not really for ourselves. So. Um, mm. Yeah, it was a strange thing, but um, it was crazy. It was really cool. I sort of, um, personally, I know it's like Billy and I, we put a lot of preparation into going to WEG and we sacrificed a lot of shows in Europe getting our horses right. Then we arrived in WEG, we walked the first course and myself and Billy were like quietly confident that we could, could do a good job. And then I've gone out and I jumped a, a good first round. And then we were there, I was talking to Rowan and I could just hear him throughout the day because he was riding last. And each time I was speaking to him, you could tell he was getting more and more confident that he was really going out there to win this class. <laughs> and I said to Jamie, I was like, Rowan's going to bloody win this thing. And he, was, and he nearly pulled it off. Yeah, when, when, when Kerm and Scott both jumped clean before me on the first day, I actually felt a little bit sick to be honest. <laughs> I was like, wow, these guys have really um, 
set a standard and then yeah and and uh, same for everybody else my horse jumped great the first day as well and then uh, I felt great after that and sort of felt like we were at home really well boys uh it's a pleasure to have you here I went to Terry Snow the owner of Willinga Park and said I've got a great idea why don't we fly these couple of boys out we'll get uh Kerm and Billy down here and without a blink of an eyelid he said let's do it so thank you so much for being our special guest for anyone here on the ground we have dinner with these four guys and then uh Rowan Scotty and uh, Billy will be here tomorrow as well so make sure you come and say g'day to them boys thank you so much and once again congratulations on an amazing effort at the World Equestrian Games 2018 Australia sixth place and qualified for the Tokyo Olympics 2020. Thanks, James. Welcome back to uh, our Daily Wrap show. Uh, we're going to bring in an extra expert. Firstly, welcome back to the panel, Dave Cameron. It's Had been, a good day, mate? Yeah, mate, it's been great. It's been a really good day. Good to have your uh, your wingman here to help you in the practice area today. Kermit. Yeah, no, that was great. Kerm oh, came down. You and brushed and, uh, me today. Did he, what? <laughs> yeah, you brushed me. Had, what do you we mean? Had, we had the big boss here today. Oh, uh, no. Who, who, uh, who David? David. David Dobson? Yes. Oh, so you know but your no. place in the pecking yeah, order Yeah, no, exactly, no. <laughs> but Is this awkward? I... Do I need to sit in the middle here? <laughs> <laughs> no, Dave and I both work with Dobbo, so no, it's good, good to have Dobbo here. And, uh, mate, uh, I know you've been our riders rep. We've been talking about this ground like I've talked more about this grass than I've talked about any grass. It seems to be holding up and everything's still to be jumping. You know, it's holding up really well, Tim. The, the jumping's been good. It was a shame we had a bit of a shower during the mini free, but um, all in all, it's pretty good. We've been able to move the jumps around and, and I think all the riders would agree that, uh, you know, we're doing everything we can, but it's, it's, it's holding up well. It's, it, it's good jumping. It's certainly exciting for the future because we're going to make plans. This turf arena could end up being one of our best grass arenas going around. Yeah, no, look, and, and it's a great setting for it. There's a really good natural runoff. Uh, I think it, it's going to be, you know, so. Kerm, does it make you want to get a horse out and get amongst it? Yeah, it sure does. Jim yeah. will be happy to hear that because yeah, it's rare that they... <laughs> yeah, We've got to do a bit of work, get our team back, back together. It was sort of after we were based in Europe for a few years, we came back and we were sort of a bit short on horsepower, but... Got a bit of work to do, but hopefully we've got a good team going soon. So we kicked off today with our junior competition. It was fast and fierce for those junior riders and Malia Lang-McMahon, two from two. But Sophie Hatch kept her pretty honest. And I think we've got some footage of the jump off here of these guys going head to head. And you can see them here. Malia Lang-McMahon, isn't she a class act for her age? Oh, she's, uh, she's sort of come down here from Queensland with a real purpose. And yeah, she's one of the first two juniors. And both the horses, all the horses jumped really well last weekend at, at Summer Classic, so, you know, they've continued to form down here. Interesting horse, Glenara Mudslide, uh, came up from Froshies. Uh, just not quite as quick through the first part of the course here. You can see Malia maybe just doing the work early. Yeah, well, Sophie's, the Mudslide horse, is, is a second horse, you'd say. Like, she's had a little bit more uh, success lately on the other one. But it's a very, very good horse to have as your second horse, and, and it did a great job today. Kerm, the Charlemagnes that uh, Vicara Champagne is by have been super horses. Yeah, they sure have. Uh, yeah, good quality horses. 
Hey, um, a special shout out to Pete McMahon, who's home, yeah. who's had a quite a serious uh, fall. So, Pete, uh, best of luck on a on a recovery there. No one likes to hear that. No, definitely, no. Tim. He sort of yeah, had a pretty bad fall to the alpha breaker, but uh, no, he's a real tough bugger, Pete. Yeah, so he'll be he'll be back. Quick. I'm sure he'll bounce back. Yes, yeah, it's no it's no fun when that happens. Well, Malia won that class there. You'd have to say that she'll be going in odds on favourite to the final on Sunday. Well, she's also got the other horse, um, Bentley's his stable name. He's um, sort of one of the, you know, probably a top string junior horse. And, um, you know, so she's got him as well. So, you know, she's going to be very tough to beat. Stepped him out in the Futurity, interestingly enough, today. Unfortunately, we don't have the footage from that. But we'll roll straight on now to the uh, second of our classes here today, the Mini Prix. The rain came down. It wasn't ideal, but another cracker of a jump off. Yeah, sure was. It was a good class of Mini Prix. And it'll be, um, yeah, exciting tomorrow. But... Tommy Dermott on these um, Yalambi horses has got him firing. And, yeah, he's just like, he's just a, a super rider, Tom, and he's so hard to beat against the clock. Izzy Stone's done a good job, Dave, hasn't she? She just keeps knocking on the door. She's not far off a big win. No, both Izzy's horses have done really well today in this class, and the Bandito horse was, was excellent. And she put a lot of pressure on a coach, but that was good to see. <laughs> it's... Uh... It's um, interesting, Kerm. She's a rider who spent some time in Europe, now come back to Australia to really having learned her craft. That never hurts any of the riders, does it? No, it sure doesn't. Especially when you're young, it's great to get over there and get a bit of experience. And, yeah, she's, she's back and doing a great job and she's going to be, be at the top end of the sport for a long time. And then finally, the jump off today, Katie Laurie's horse in that Grand Prix. It looked unbelievable again. Two from two. She's put four grand in the bank and... Uh, you can see her here. She just rolls on here, and it's interesting. She's back to this fence here. If we just pause it there for a moment, you'll just see how much quicker she is than Tom. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Mm. She, yeah. she really did see the one she wanted off the turn, and, uh, yeah, right from the moment she went to the start peak, she looked like her attentions were to win the class. The interesting thing here, having watched this footage, I know you boys haven't, Tom was pretty quick back there, and they ended up not being much in it, but... Uh, Katie just knew the craft all the way through. Yeah, and the horse knows the craft too. You watch it here jump the wall. It nearly takes out the wing, but it knows it has to go left. Jumps and, like, just saved, saved a second there. Katie will say that's all part of the plan, wouldn't you say? That is. It is. If you've got to take risks in jump offs, and she's pretty good at making them, making them come off. Animate the sire of Alpha Activity. Matty, as he's known around the stables, it just keeps finding a horse, doesn't it? You keep finding these ones pop up by you. Uh, it is a real winner, that one, uh, Alpha Activity. And, um, you know, Tom, Tom proved that today. He almost won the class. Kerm, question for you. You've seen the field now. $25,000 class tomorrow mm. to the winner. 62 dollars or 60, say, 65, let's call it that, for one of the figure total prize money. So serious money up here tomorrow for these guys. What, what's your pick? I think, like, it's probably the favourite now, but you're going to have to go off Katie. Like, she's been second the last... Our last two big Grand Prix, she's nearly won both of them, finished second. So she has to be right up there. But uh, Chuggy's horse, it's the, it's the best up-and-coming horse in the country, I believe, and it looks great today. So it could pull something out tomorrow. But it's, it's also quite an open field. Like, um, Gabby's horse is jumping really well. Uh, Stephen Dingwell's horse is looking great. He sort of tried to catch Katie and got it quite an away distance to the wall, which isn't perfect, but again, it won't hurt it for tomorrow. So, yeah, there's a number of chances. Dave, we've been talking about it a lot. It was tough to watch Tom McDermott have two down on Elegance de la Chamille today. Yeah. 50 grand, it just pulls a little <laughs> further away. It would have been tougher for Tom if I'd only had the two down. But, you know, it's it'll be funny. interesting to see what the rankings are like after today. I don't think he's, he's out, of the, out of the mix. And... Tom's a fighter. He'll be, he'll be uh, doing everything he can, particularly when there's 50 grand at stake. Yeah, it's uh, big time. So he has to be the overall champion. So how this works is they get points for today, points for yesterday. We add them together. We divide them by two. Katie will go into tomorrow on zero penalties. It'll be interesting to see just how far away Tom is. I didn't have a look where he finished today. But as you say, show jumping, Kerm, anything can happen. Yeah, and... Like Tom's such a fighter, he'll be he'll be giving it his all tomorrow, and he won't be far away. Mate, uh, we talked earlier about this show. You say you want to come back next year. We hope you can join us. Yeah, I'll, yeah, lock it in. Lock it in, Eddie. It's <laughs> locked away. We've got your uh, stables booked. I don't think we'll get Dave Cameron out of here, mate. You look like uh, you're enjoying I'm, it. I'm very much enjoying it, mate. And uh, you know, it's a nice holiday destination. So I'm sure we could come a day day before, a couple of days after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mate, uh, you come down as early as you like. We'll love to have you, mate. Uh, I didn't ask you before because we went straight to Tom. What's your pick for tomorrow? 
I, I, after watching today... And I'm, just on this, let's just clarify this. You did pick the winner last weekend and you called it very yeah. early. So yeah. sports better uh, mm -hmm. riding on your results here to know uh, what yeah. the odds go. Well, Brooke Langbeck and Quintago did jump very well today. You know, that, so, In you the know, money. I, 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 you know, once, you, once you find a, a good racehorse, you sort <laughs> of follow it along. And uh, it's a bit the same with the show jumper. And she's in form. She's going well. She's probably got a lot of belief. So I'll say Brooke, but I think my outsider, I reckon he's paying about 450 is Steve Dingle, I reckon. Uh, I thought he jumped, his was jumped fantastic today, he made a little mistake. He uh, didn't do Summer Classic last weekend, so it was quite fresh. And, and so far the, the horse have actually suited his horse, so yeah. He's, Interesting he's... he took his horse to Wallaby Hill last weekend to train on the Otto surface. He's got one at home, but he wanted a bigger one, so he went up to Wallaby Hill. He's, he's playing the game right. No, so he, He's always got a plan, Put Stephen, a little video so. on Instagram, yeah. showing stuff off. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to keep your Insta content up, that's what he tells me. I don't know what he's on about, but uh, it's certainly interesting. Hey boys, uh, super to have you here on the panel. Kerm, we'll catch up with you again tonight at dinner. Dave, you'll be back tomorrow afternoon. Scott and Rowan are joining us again tomorrow afternoon as our expert panel. We're going to be going through, we're going to dissect that Grand Prix like we never have before. Of course, we plan to have first horse on course here at 12.30 tomorrow. We kick off at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, the first time we get to see our amateur riders, and I know they're very excited to be riding here. Oh, they will be. You know, it's a great ring to be part of, and, and you know, they'll be well and truly looking forward to getting in that ring. Well, make sure you join us here tomorrow from 8 o'clock, of course, the Grand Prix. The $25,000 is going to be going to someone who's going to get it. And can Tom McDermott take home an extra $50,000 bonus? All of you were decided here on the Turf Arena at Willinga Park. But until tomorrow, thank you so much, David Cameron. No worries, mate. Enjoy being here. Kermo, great to have you here. Thanks, Tim. Mate, uh, I'm Tim Drevman. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you here tomorrow.